Hey guys, it's Chris Long at BMW. Today we're going to be installing a turnover ball, part number 1012, in this brand new 2015 GMC 2500 three quarter ton. Now, this 1012 is the exact same turnover ball that you'll use in both the Chevy and the GMC trucks in a three quarter ton and one ton all the way back to 2011 year models, regardless if they're a short bed or a long bed. Let's get started on this installation. Now when you unbox the turnover ball, you're going to want to get the installation instructions out and follow these to a T. They're going to keep you out of trouble. We're going to show you three things that you want to take care of before you actually get started on the installation. First is you want to determine how much clearance you have between the cab of your truck and the trailer that you're going to be pulling, especially if you're using a short bed pickup truck like we're using today. The second thing is you're going to want to get the spare wheel and tire down and out of your way. Some people try to install it with the spare in there. Make your life a lot easier and get the spare out of the way. You'll have much more room to work under the truck. Also, if you don't have a lift available, you can use a floor jack to raise the truck up from the frame, allowing the rear axle to fall, and this will give you more space underneath the truck and in the fender wheels to work. Now, the first real step of this installation is to cut this section of aluminum heat shield out of the way between these two bed cross members. And this can be done using several different types of tools we recommend the use of either air shears, a power hacksaw, or a cutoff wheel. Today I'm going to use the cutoff wheel, and that's one of the tools that do require a little bit extra clearance between the heat shield and the top of the tailpipe. So I'll be using a, a solution of soapy water and a pry bar to disengage the rubber hangers on the exhaust to get this down and give me the clearance I need to use the cutoff wheel. Speaking of clearance, some models will have this spare tire heat shield uh, between the tailpipe and the spare. And if this is in your way, especially if the truck is down on the ground and you're working on it on ground level, um, only two bolts with 13 millimeter heads hold this on the truck. Uh, so taking the time to take those two bolts out can give you some extra room to work. So let's go ahead and get this heat shield out of the way. Alright, the next step for us is to get this fender wheel liner out of the way because it does block access for us to be able to put the cross members in the truck. Now, depending on the year model of truck you have will determine how many different fasteners you have holding this liner in. So, it could be a little tedious to get this thing out. There is an alternative. You can take out just the two lower fasteners in the bed lip and then pry the liner up out of the way to get the access that you need. But you, if you do that, you do run the risk of damaging the liner. So we recommend just taking the liner out altogether. So let's take this liner out. The next step is to cut the notch in the bed lip here on the passenger side so that we can get our angle cross member installed in the truck. Now, if you refer to the instructions, we tell you to measure two inches forward of this cross member here, and that'll be the beginning of our cut. And I usually try to make the cut about an inch and a half, two inches wide, like so. And then we want the, the center of that notch to be no higher than about three quarters of an inch from the bottom of the bed flange, right there. So now that I've got that marked, we'll cut our notch in the bed lip. The next step of the installation is to actually cut the hole in the bed of the truck so that we can get the center section into place. And This is the step that makes a lot of people nervous because they don't want to get the hole cut in the wrong location. Reference the installation instructions. They will give you the proper measurement for the truck that you're working on in both the long and short bed measurements. Now today we're working on a short bed and our measurement right here is 44 and 3 quarter inches. So we're going to take a tape measure, lift that right onto the back edge of the truck bed, pull back, use the lock to hold it into place. Now, this particular truck has a spray-in bed liner, so we're going to have to allow for the thickness of the bed liner back here at the back, which I've predetermined to be about an eighth of an inch thick. So I'm going to add an eighth of an inch to that 44 and three-quarter measurement, which gives us 44 and seven-eighths. OK, 
Okay, there's my mark. And then we need to center this up between the fender wells to make sure that we're in the center of this rib. Now, using a tape measure can be a little bit of a problem here because the curve in, this, in, this, in the side of the bed is not the same all the time. So what I like to do is take a, a small ruler and line the center of my ruler up with my mark and then measure from the actual fender well over to the edge of my ruler, which here I've got 19 and a quarter inches to the edge of the ruler. Same here. And I need to shift it to the passenger side just a hair to, to square it up. We'll try that again. Okay, we're right at just under 19 and a quarter. And just under 19 and a quarter. So now we're right in the middle. I'm going to readjust my center point mark. All right. And now we can punch our, uh, our mark with a center punch. Make sure and wear your safety glasses. If you can keep this as precise as possible, your hole will be nice and perfect in the middle. All right, now we can drill our pilot holes. All right, now we're gonna cut our four inch hole in the bed. And you're going to want to take the time to allow your saw to do the work. Don't force this. If you're using a, a drill like this one, you're going to want to use the slowest speed possible. And I like to let the saw go backwards just a little bit to establish a groove. And now we're going to actually drill our hole. All right, now that I've cut the four inch hole in the bed, what we're gonna do is take the time to eliminate the tail filings of the, of the metal. You can use a regular round file to work your way around the edge. If you have a power file, feel free to use that as well. Just be careful with the tool so it doesn't jump out and scratch the bed. The next step is for us to install the front cross member in the truck. Now you'll notice that the holes in the cross member are going to be in the flange that faces the rear of the truck for the front cross member. We're going to line this up with the notch that we've already cut in the bed lip. Just lay that right up on top of the passenger side of the frame and slide this through to the other side. Now once you get into a certain point, you'll have to get up under the truck and actually pull the rail the rest of the way across. All right, now we're under the truck and we're going to finish pulling the front cross member from right to left over the driver's side frame rail. And once this is inside the truck, you're going to notice this contour area in the front cross member and that's designed to clear the fuel tank. Now the, the tolerance in that area is kind of tight, so we're going to go ahead and put in the bolt. This is the second hole from the left and we provided you with this nice little rubber o-ring that we'll put on the bolt and you want to use a small flat tip screwdriver or other type of tool to actually roll that o-ring down tight against the bolt against the uh, rail like so so that there's no uh, slack or any play there now we can just slide the rail forward out of the way of, of putting our center section in the next step is for us to get the center section of the turnover ball into position under the truck now this is the only part of the installation where you might need a helper or a second person to hold the center section up into position while you put the hardware in underneath. If you have an overhead lifting device like, like a hoist or a cherry picker, those items will work real well. We also have this helpful little tool called the Hitch Helper from B&W. Put this right down inside the hole and it gives us a center bracket that will give us a place to put the center pin of the section through and that will let us pull it up against the bed without having to have a second person. All right, we have the overhead lifting device in place on top of the bed, and now we're going to put the center section up into its position. Now you'll notice that the receiver socket for the ball is offset to one side of the center section. This needs to be oriented to the rear of the truck. You'll also see this groove for the release handle mechanism 
it needs to be oriented to the driver's side of the truck. That'll help you get the center section into the right, into the right place. I'm gonna lift this up over the differential, get it up over the fuel tank, and then swing the right side up over the exhaust. Now you'll remember earlier I took the exhaust down to give me the clearance that I needed to get my cutoff wheel in here between the heat shield and the exhaust. Keeping that exhaust down gives us more room and some clearance to work under here. Now we're gonna lift this up above the fuel tank and put the hitch helper bracket down into the main receiver hole. Be sure it's oriented to left and right. And once you have that in position, engage the, engage the release pin. Verify that it's gone through the slot inside your lifting device. And now we just want to push this forward out of the way so that we can get our rear cross member support in. All right, the next step is for us to install the one inch thick bar that serves as the rear cross member for the turnover ball. And you're gonna notice that the threaded holes that are in this bar are actually offset to one side. They're not in true center. According to the instructions, we want these holes to be oriented to the bottom. So keep that in mind as you slide your bar into position from the passenger side to the driver's side because we're gonna tilt this bar in a way that those holes will be oriented at the bottom of the bar. So we're gonna go ahead and slide this through, feed it over to the passenger or to the driver's side. And now we're gonna get under the truck and pull it through to span the driver's side of the frame rail. All right, back under the truck. Now we're gonna take this one inch bar and continue sliding it over to the driver's side. And we wanna get this centered up left or right as best we can. Here's the center of your hole in the bed and these two holes here. So we know we're positioned left and right about where we need to be. And then what we're gonna do is tilt this bar. Now remember, we wanna tilt it in a way that the, the holes will be offset to the bottom of the bar. And for the way I've slid it in, it's gonna be this way. I'm gonna take a crescent wrench, which works really well to get up there on the bar and finish twisting this into position. It gives you the leverage you need to pop that into position like so. And now we'll pull that cross member back tight against this bed channel and we can go up into the top of the bed and finish raising our center section into its final position. All right, now that our center section is being held tightly against the bottom of the bed, we can get our cross members into place. Just simply take a hold of that rear one inch bar and slide it forward to where it's flat against the, the back side of the center section. And then on our fr front cross member, you'll remember that bolt that we put in earlier that's held into place with the little rubber O-ring. Now I've got my, my arm and hand on the outside of the driver's side frame to take a hold of that cross member and tilt it down until that bolt is lined up with that hole and then gently slide the bolt into place. Now I can take a hold of the rest of the cross member and slide it back tight against the center section. Now when it comes time to put the hardware in to hold the, the, the three items together, you have two different lengths of bolt. You have a two inch long bolt and a one and a half inch long bolt. The two inch bolt is used with a lock washer and a flat washer and will be used to attach the center section to the rear one inch bar. So get those threaded into position. And then the shorter one and a half inch bolts, bring those in from the front side. You do not need a flat washer and then just use a lock washer and nut on this side. Now just snug these up by hand. We don't wanna tighten these right now. We wanna allow for some adjustments later in the installation. But let's go ahead and get our hardware into position and just snug them by hand. All right, before we put our side plates into position, we're gonna to wanna to take the time to set up these bolt guides. Now, these little guides will be welded together in pairs and your hardware kit, just break those apart. Take your three quarter inch hardware with the 15 16 head and just start that bolt into the strap. And you wanna you want thread these in with the head of the bolt on the side with the little hold tabs. Now you could use a power tool to run this through or hand wrench 15 16 just run this through until the bolt is up against those tabs. And then it's probably best to use a, a hand wrench because you, you don't want to bend these tabs down. You want to make sure that the head of the bolt is flat on the strap with these little hold tabs engaging the corners of the bolt. If you manage to bend those down while you were running the bolt in, then you're going to want to take a small screwdriver and bend those up. It's very important for those to engage the head of the bolt so that when you put these in the frame of the truck, it's keeping the bolt from spinning. You have no way to get a wrench up in the frame. So once that's through, we can put our hardware on and tighten it down with the power wrench and not worry about the, the bolt slipping. 
All right, now we're going to install the bolt guides. The short ones are the easiest. Simply put them inside the large slotted hole in the frame and rotate the bolt into position. Take the bolt, pull it in flat, and repeat that on the driver's side. And you're going to install the long bolt guides from inside the vehicle frame. Use the large hole in the frame that's right above the bump stop. Insert your bolt and strap and then you'll have to pull this up to get the bolt in the position that works best from the outside of the vehicle. Okay, now that we've got our bolt guides in the proper locations in the frame, we'll go ahead and install our side plates. Now here we are on the passenger side and we don't wanna push the bolt guides into the frame. So you wanna be very careful as you're putting the side plate up into position between the two cross members to get it up into place and then just roll the plate into position, allowing the bolts to fall right into their holes. And give those a quick tug to pull them, pull them out. I'm going to use a flat washer, lock washer, and nut. Right there. Don't want to get that too tight right now. Leave some room for some movement. And this is also a good time to go ahead and put our hardware in for the side plate to cross members. We're going to use a one and a half inch bolt with a lock washer and flat washer to the back cross member. Like so. And then the front bolt is going to be just the bolt without a flat washer through from the front. And then we'll use a flat washer, lock washer, and nut. Okay. Don't forget to put the hardware on the back bolt and repeat those steps on the driver's side. All right, we're on the home stretch now. With the hitch in its final position and everything in place, the next step is to start tightening all of our hardware. Now, it's very important that you follow the tightening sequence that's outlined in the installation instructions. If you don't do that, things could shift and move out of place. The first bolts that we're called to tighten are the eight bolts, four per side, that hold the outside cross members to the center section. We're going to tighten and torque these to 80 foot-pounds. So let's get started. All right, now that our center section has been tightened and torqued, before we carry on with the remainder of the hardware tightening, we want to make sure that the hitch is square in the truck. And what you'll do is you'll use a tape measure or a ruler and measure from the, the nearest bed cross member to the nearest cross member of the turnover ball and you want this measurement to match on both sides of the truck. You can use a rubber mallet to, to adjust the hitch either forward or rearward until that measurement is the same on both sides. All right, now that our hitch has been properly squared in the truck, we're gonna finish the tightening sequence by tightening these two 5 8 bolts that hold the side plates to the frame first and torquing those to 100 foot-pounds. The last bolts to tighten will be the ones that actually hold the cross members to the side plates. These are half-inch fasteners and get torqued to 80 foot-pounds. We'll go ahead and snug these up. All right, the final positioning of the hitch and the tightening and torquing of all the hardware has been complete. The next step is to install the release handle. Now you want to make sure that you've disengaged the overhead lifting device if you've used one so that this pin is free to move. And we're going to take this handle and take the, the rubber coated end and feed it through the hole that we provided right here through the center section. And then after you get it through the center section, you need to feed it through the hole in the side plate of the frame and then that'll put the rod in position for us to put the hardware in. Now it's very important that the the handle rod is on the forward side or the cab side of the vertical tab on the release pin. If it's in any other position the handle will try to jam when you use it. Let's get our bolt in there. 
Okay, again with our rod in the forward position of that tab, we're going to take the carriage bolt, which has the square head here, and slide it in from the rear of the truck through the square in the tab, which you can't see from your angle, but it'll slide right into position and hold flat. And then take the, car the uh, lock nut and thread it onto the bolt from the back side. And then you're going to tighten this down nice and snug. Don't over tighten it, just nice and snug. But you do want it tight. That's a lock nut and you'll have to tighten it all the way on. If for some reason there's not enough space to get a wrench right here in this area, you can actually use an alternate bolt that comes with the kit where you can put a wrench on this side and tighten it from the other side. If your fender well liner comes down low enough to block the use of your latch handle, then you'll need to trim a little piece of this out so that we can still operate the handle. So I'm going to take care of that right now. All right, now that the handle is installed, the next step is to install our safety chain U-bolts. And what we're going to do is take a half inch drill and line this up with the existing hole in the center section. And we're going to drill these half inch holes through from the bottom. After we've drilled our holes from underneath the bed, you're going to find that there's a little bit of a rough edge on the top. So take the time to dress that up with a round file or a rotofile and get that edge taken care of. And then after we've cleaned the edges up of our holes, we can take our U-bolts, pass those through from the top, and we'll be ready to put our springs and nuts on from the underside. All right, now that we've dropped our U-bolts in from the top of the bed, we're going to put on our tapered springs, which hold those bolts down when you're not using them, and also secure them using the lock nut. Now this tapered spring has a wide side and a narrow side. You want to make sure that the wide side of that spring is oriented towards the top. Place that up over the U-bolt. Thread your lock nut on. And it'll be, it'll, you'll be meeting with uh, some resistance there because it is a lock nut. And then what we want you to do is to tighten that nut until it is flush with the bottom of the U-bolt. Maybe a little more. Perfect. Now repeat that for the other three. All right, after we finish up our safety chains, the last step of our installation is to install the gooseneck ball. Now while we were under the truck, that was a good time to go ahead and put the exhaust back into place, put the spare tire heat shield back into place, remount the spare, and reinstall the fender well liners if those were removed for this installation. Now we'd like to see a nice light coat of white lithium grease on these rounded corners of the ball. Try not to get any on the flat spots, we like to see those dry. And then just insert the ball when you're ready to tow a trailer, engage the latch pin and you're ready to go. When you don't want to tow a trailer, disengage the latch pin, Turn the ball over into its stowed position for a nice flat surface. Re-engage the latch pin, and in true BMW fashion, a hitch when you need it, a level bed when you don't.